Thanks for joining me today as I cover the 1998 horror action adventure film Deep Rising, where a group of people have to overcome a giant deep sea worm. Not the kind you'd expect on a hook, and certainly not the kind in a bottle of tequila. But still, all we want to know is how to beat them. As usual, stab that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you dig the tutorial. And, as a disclaimer, this video contains my own personal analysis and commentary. It's not a substitute to watching the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Of course, the best place to find this kind of worm would be at sea in the rust bucket of a boat, just like Finnegan's, whose apparent destination is the middle of nowhere. Of course, only the rich guy who hired them knows where they are, even though there is a map and a sea-savvy captain aboard. How does no one know how to read a map on this boat? I mean, they even have GPS locators on the ship to make it easier. Anyway, it looks like the crew on the luxury cruise liner has navigation under control, while there's a party happening on board to celebrate the maiden voyage of the Argonautica, the most expensive pleasure line that's ever cruised and is obviously designed for the super wealthy. Which makes me wonder how Trillian with her bubblegum style got on. She obviously can't be one of the rich, unless she's that good of a thief. And even though the jury's still out on that, she does lift the captain's keycard from his pocket, and it's obvious that her intentions are to get rich, or die trying. While back on Finnegan's boat to nowhere, banter between the rich guy's mercenaries creates a distraction for one meek loner from Finnegan's crew to sneak off on his own. And while it seems to be under the guise of stepping outside to smoke a butt, his crowbar suggests otherwise, and without it, he never would have found the torpedoes on board. Lots of them. Now, this Finnegan guy must be real desperate for money, because he seems to have agreed to some random job with a bunch of thugs, not knowing a thing about their backgrounds, their agendas, their motives, nothing. Very irresponsible, even criminals have a code. But we may get to learn about Trillian's goals on the cruise ship as she uses Captain Atherton's keycard to get into the vault, where she of course gets caught and we learn of her plump criminal record for burglary, robbery, forgery, and attempted murder. But at least she makes off with a fistful of dollars while they lock her up in the brig. While back on Finnegan's ship with the torpedoes, the rich guy's muscle men are arming the torpedoes and themselves. I seriously hope these two parties find themselves on the same ship soon, because now we go back to our klepto, who's enjoying a rather nice feast aboard the cruise ship, all while she's locked away. While in the system's operation room, someone is installing the same kind of discs we saw on the torpedoes. The discs shut down the entire ship's systems, including their navigation and communications all while something big and ominous is coming at them from deep below, slamming into the ship and sending everyone flying. When you have a totally isolated vehicle and a small space, there's nothing quite like mass panic to bring everybody together. However, we should all know that the bathroom is always the worst place to run to. I feel like Jurassic Park set this precedent, but you should know that now after seeing some random chick bites it when something reaches up the toilet and she dies in a spray of blood. Not quite sitting on a throne when you are that vulnerable. Think about that for a minute. Anyway, we'll leave them in a mess of chaos and go back to Finnegan, just in time for his ship to slam into a lifeboat from the cruise liner, which miraculously explodes even though boats don't explode on impact. But hey, the crew from Finnegan's boat spots the cruise ship, and I'm thinking we're almost done jumping from ship to ship to follow the story. And it finally happens. The mercenaries take over Finnegan's ship and board the cruise ship. But Hanover's crew is surprised to find the luxury liner empty, with blood all over the place. Blood and our vixen of a thief. After the men split up into two groups, Finnegan and Joey are trying to get parts for their boat, and it seems that his gearhead is apparently more sensitive than in just one way. He smells something weird, and we're wondering if it's the monster. Too bad T-Ray doesn't pick up on that and goes off alone to investigate a ferocious growl. Of course he's going to end up being just another blood splatter. But hey, at least the monster is thoughtful and gave back their gun. 
And so far, it appears as though they're up against an intelligent creature, so they better start preparing some serious strategies. Finally, our slick cat burglar can join the rest of the crew now, when Hanover finds her trying to get into the vault again, where some of the cruise ship crew had hidden themselves away, and everyone seems to collide in a ball of tension. I get it, but it's not going to get anybody anywhere except getting everyone killed, just like how Mamuli's cocky attitude makes him the next bloodstain, and this just becomes one hell of an organized mess. Understandably, Finnegan and Grease Monkey run for their lives from the monster, leaving without getting all the parts that they need. It's a little too convenient that they meet up with our cat burglar in the elevator though. I guess they had to run into each other somehow. I just think it would have been more ideal if it wasn't when the monster was on the roof of the elevator car. But I guess even monsters have patience, because it waits while Hanover's crew catches up to everyone and they all try to brainstorm the situation. Too bad they couldn't brainstorm their way out of that tin can before the worm makes the cable snap, sending the car crashing to the belly of the ship, where somehow everybody survives the fall, only to discover a mess of gore. Alright, so we have a smattering of mixed peeps that have accumulated together during the chaos who now have to find their way back to the top of the ship with an intelligent, patient monster either trying to get them or just messing with them although I think at this point it's the latter. Dutifully, they have to try to brainstorm again, and hopefully this time they'll come up with an actual plan. I mean, feasibly speaking, they should be able to. They have all the right people. There's the owner of the ship who knows all its nooks and crannies, the obvious muscle, which should be able to keep the monster at bay, pun intended, the mechanic who should be capable of ensuring that they have a boat to escape in, and the token hottie. With the mix of people and all the supplies in the room, they have pretty good chances. At least most of them do, if they can get past fighting amongst themselves. Whatever they decide, they should get moving now, because the obvious sea monster is hunting them. And it doesn't take long for Finnegan's shooting to cause a partially decomposed dude to spill out of its belly onto the floor. Mm-mm. You could try tonic water, you could even try Midori, but have you ever tried digestive juices as a mixer? How many people are in that room, I can't even tell anymore. But there seems to be an incredible amount of shooting of high-powered weapons. That doesn't do much more than piss the monster off. But I would think, being a squishy creature of the sea, they could just start slicing the beast's tentacles in half with those automatic weapons. Unfortunately, nobody has a real knack for gun control, so that's probably not happening anytime soon. Anyways, thinking on her toes and landing on her feet, our cat burglar is obviously clever and always hatching a scheme of her own, but negotiations don't get far when her conversation with Finnegan is interrupted by the monster. Thankfully, the burglar happens to be skilled with a gun and miraculously able to blast the monster in the face without shooting Finnegan. Maybe I spoke too soon about the gun control bit. But the monster must be some kind of regenerating creature, like a regular earthworm. Because even though she blasted it in the face, it only made the tentacle retreat. It didn't appear to do any significant damage. Now one other suspicious thing is that the guy who owns the ship knows an awful lot about the creature. Like an unsettling amount. Referring to it as the Atoya, some strange deep sea worm. And apparently, the deeper they live, the bigger and scarier they are. They're absolutely crafty and sneaky. They suck all the fluids out of the human body and excrete the skeletons. That does not sound like any type of earthbound worm I know of. I think Finnegan has the right idea with getting back on his boat and escaping. But most of them aren't going to make it. Even in the dark, we know that this ship is highly flammable. Finnegan and Trillian should just blow the ship up while they escape on Finnegan's craft so they can finally break the sexual tension. Now the trick is to find a way back to Finnegan's boat, and with the main doors sealed, that's when Simon comes in handy, to tell them which way is out. Unfortunately, this seems like Simon's only purpose. The way out, however, requires Finnegan and Hanover to team up and dive in for an underwater aquatic adventure. So, Finnegan dives in with whatever parts they have to repair his boat, even though he's definitely going to lose them. But now the group has split up, and while the others are waiting for the signal that the coast is clear, the beast is quickly coming for them. 
With no time to wait, the rest dive in. Swimming now through the murky water, quick-thinking Mason, even though he's being eaten, blows up one of the monster's tentacles with a grenade. And yes, grenades do work underwater, in case you were wondering. Very noble, Mason, thank you. Mason gives everyone enough time to group back up, but I'm thinking that's more of a hindrance right now, seeing as how none of them can agree on anything and some of them are actually losing their cool. With damage to the hull, the cruise ship is sinking and rescue won't come looking for them for another 24 hours. They need to get the hell out of there. Using the torpedoes on Finnegan's boat to blow the cruise ship up seems like their best option. You see, the monster has already found its way in. But at least they won't have to fight with Mulligan anymore because he gets eaten next. Now the Atoya is herding the humans into a scary corner, and they really need to start trying to outsmart this beast, rather than just defending themselves against it. It's time to be taking the offensive, but it could be too late, because they fall for the monster's next trap just when the beasts break through the boat's hull, sending all the squishy humans running and splitting up. Once outside, we discover that there's an island they could possibly reach, even without the parts to repair the engine on Finnegan's ship. Because the bandit has found Cedos, perfect for a water getaway. Even though poor Joey can fight through his pain and his broken heart, they really should give up on Finnegan's boat. And while sorting it out, the cruise ship owner must be a real vigilante, because he really has it out for the cat burglar even though she only tried to steal from his passengers. I mean, she's been pretty helpful thus far, hasn't she? I recall her blasting the worm in the face to save somebody's life? Maybe I'm mistaken. Finnegan can't leave without her because he hasn't gotten his kiss yet, so he returns to save Trillian. But the beasts seem exceptionally angry while they're destroying the place. And honestly, Finnegan and the cat better get the hell out while they can. But no. They've got to stand around just so we can get a good look at the big and scary sea monster in its entirety. So after finally giving up on Finnegan's boat, they finally get on one of the Cedos, only to find they should have done that ages ago, because the beast is once again two steps ahead of them and has blocked the exit. Conveniently, Finnegan's boat crashes into the cruise ship, detonating the torpedoes, setting the ship ablaze which gives Finnegan and the cat burglar enough time to escape in some movie magic. And after making it to the island, we finally get their long-awaited kiss. Where in more movie magic, Joey makes it to shore too. Now that is a miracle that he didn't bleed to death or get eaten by sharks while floating to safety. Only thing is, safety is where more beasts are. After a full day's worth of fighting, maybe tequila is the answer to this story. I don't know, but let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to stab the like button if you enjoyed the tutorial and subscribe to the channel for more ways on how to beat epic movie monsters. Until next time.